Hi everybody! Today we will create another fully functional app, but this time we will use a brand new library called DearPy GUI. Now, DearPy GUI, at least in my opinion, is much more user-friendly and much more intuitive than Tkinter. That's why we will use it to build an interface for my simple SMS spam filter. So if you guys want to learn how to build this app from scratch, you can go ahead and download the starter files from the description of the video from my GitHub and let's do this. So let's quickly go over the starter files. You guys will find a database containing a bunch of SMS messages. Some of them are ham, some of them are spam. Um, you will also find a PNG logo and two different Python files. Now functions.py, it contains all the functionality of our SMS spam filter. Um, and I highly recommend not to modify it because you might mess something up. And the only file we'll actually be working on is app.py and we will open it with our favorite code editor. In my case, that would be Atom. Cool, let's close all these unnecessary tabs. And as you guys can see, I already took care of the imports for you and we can move on with the action. We'll begin with a few basic settings to our window object. We will set the size with set main window size with a bunch of underscores in between. And we will set the width to 540 and the height to 720 because I like to be specific. We will set the font size with set global font scale um, and inside these round brackets i'll specify 1.25 the default value is one so i just want the text to be slightly larger that's all and next i will set a theme for my project we'll do this with set underscore theme and here you can choose from a bunch of really really cool themes my favorite one is gold and that's the one i'll be using so we'll just type gold uh, with a capital g don't forget we will call these settings um, window object settings. And once we got these out of the way, we can initialize our window object. And we will do this by typing with window. And inside these round brackets, we will specify the name of this window and we will call it SMS spam filter. Actually simple SMS spam filter. Okay, and here we get to set uh, width and height for this secondary window object, okay? Because our main window, we already specified the size here, okay? We will set the width to uh, 520 this time. I just need it to be slightly smaller than the main window. And the height, we will set it to 677 because I really like to be specific. And then, um, because we need to have something inside the switch statement, we'll just print for now, um, GUI is running. And the last command that dear pi requires would be start dear pi GUI. Okay, let's save this file and we can go ahead and open our terminal and run it. So in my case, I'm gonna use Anaconda as usually. First, I'm going to activate my main environment with activate main. And now we will navigate to the exact same folder where we saved our app file. We'll do this with CD, which stands for current directory. In my case, that would be documents, Python, dear pi. And let's actually double check that we got the right folder. So let's see the URL documents python dear pi perfect i should be in the right place and we can run our app with python app dot py enter cool so we can see that our window object was initialized but our secondary window is not positioned uh, very well in relation to our main window so let's tackle it inside our code i'm gonna close this and right below our print statement, we will type set window pause. And the first parameter would be the name of our window. We can just copy it from above. And the next two parameters would be uh, the position of the window on the X axis, which is zero, and the position along the Y axis, which is also zero, at least in my case. We will save this file, rerun it, 
And by the way, you don't have to retype this line of code. Just use the up arrow and that will bring up the last command you use. Okay. So we'll just hit enter. And you can see that our window is now placed perfectly along the page. Next, we will add our logo. And the way to do this with DearPy is to first create enough space for the logo, and then we will insert it into this space. Hope it makes sense. So we will start with add drawing, which creates this space, and we will name this space logo. We will also need to specify the width which in our case would be 520 to match the width of our uh, secondary window. Actually, let's remove this gap. And we will also need to specify a height measurement. Um, in our case, that would be 290 because you know me, I just love these weird numbers. Cool, so this line of code created the space for our logo. Now we'll just need to insert it into it. And we'll do this from outside the width statement. We will type draw image and inside the round brackets, the first parameter would be the name of our space. In our case, that's logo. We'll just copy it. The second parameter would be the URL of our file. In our case, that's logo underscore spam filter dot PNG. And the last parameter would be the position of this logo. Um, I would like to place it at zero and 240. Let's see how it looks like. We'll save the file and we will rerun our app again, uh, pressing the up arrow and enter. Okay, let's fix this typo first. <laughs> so add drawing, okay? Make sure you spell it correctly. And we'll go back to our um, terminal, enter. Cool, so our logo now appears inside the window but it's a little bit too close to the edge so let's fix it uh, quickly with some padding i'm gonna close this window and we will add one more setting to our main window we will type set style window padding and we will uh, specify the pixel amount uh, we would like to see from each of the sides in my case that would be 30 and 30. Okay, we will save this and we will rerun it. So as you guys can see, our logo is now centered on a page and it looks fantastic. Now we'll just need to add some instructions. But before we move on with the instructions, I would like to separate them as much as possible from my logo. And a good way to do this is to use a separator. We'll just type right below our add drawing command, add separator. Cool. And right below it, I would like to add a little bit of spacing with add spacing. And inside the round brackets, we will specify count equals 12, meaning I'm creating a vertical gap 12 pixels high. Okay. Right below it, we can go ahead and add our instructions. We'll do this simply by typing add text. And inside those round brackets, we will specify our instructions. So I will type please enter an SMS message of your choice to check if it's spam or not. We will save it and we will rerun this file to take a look. Okay, so if you ignore my typo, it actually looks pretty good. The only thing I would like to change is I would like to adjust the color of this text to match the golden color from my logo. So back in our code, we will first fix my typo, SMS, and I will also add a color attribute to our text widget. And we'll do this on the next line because I don't want my face to overlap the code. We will type color equals, and inside the square brackets, we will specify the RGB value of our color. In my case, that would be 232 uh, for the red, 163 for the green, and 33 for the blue. If we'll save this file and we will rerun our app, we can see that our text is now golden. And before we add our input widget, I would like to space it out. So we're just going to copy this line from above because I want to keep my spacing consistent. And right beneath this spacing, we will collect our user input. We'll type add input text 
And inside the round brackets, the first parameter is always the name of the widget. In our case, that would be input. The second parameter would be the width. In my case, 415. And I would also like to include some default tags as a placeholder. We can do this by typing default value equals, and we will type a string of type message here. Cool. Let's save it and have a look. Awesome. So we got our input right underneath our instructions and we can move on with the action button. So as you guys can see, I've added some comments off camera because the code was getting a little bit too cluttered. So right below our input, we will add some spacing once again. We will copy this line of code because we want the exact same spacing. And right beneath it, we can add our button. And to add buttons with Dear Pi is just as you imagine it, add underscore button. And inside the round brackets, as usual, the first parameter is the name of the button. In our case, I'll call it check. Okay. And the second parameter would be the callback function. So the callback function is a function that's attached to our button and it handles the click event. So we'll just type callback and this will equal to a function that we are yet to define. Okay. We will do this shortly and we will call it check spam. And we will start with the most basic function ever, and then we will build it up. So in the very, very top of our code, right below our imports, we will define this function with def check underscore spam. And inside these round brackets, dear Pi GUI expects to see two parameters. You don't have to use them in the body of your message, but you need to specify them when you call the function. So the first parameter is always sender and the second parameter is always data. And again, we don't really need to use them. We just need to specify them. As I said, this function is going to be very easy. At first we will type print. I was clicked and we will save the file. We will rerun it and we will click on the check button. And as we click, oh, sorry, I should open my console next to it. And as we click check, we can see that there's a new message popping up on our terminal. Cool. So most of the widgets are already on the page. There's just one more widget that we will need to add only after the button is clicked. This widget consists of text and it will show the user whether his input was labeled as spam or not. And because this widget simply doesn't exist on our window when we first click the button, we will need to account for it inside our callback function with an if statement. To do this, we will add a predefined parameter to our function. We will call it pred, as in prediction, and we will assign it to an empty list. And we will store all our future predictions inside this list. This way we can differentiate between a scenario where the list is empty to a scenario where the list contains any type of items. Okay. That's what we're going to do inside our if statement. So before we move on with the if statement, I would like to access our window object. Once again, we will type with window and we will specify the name of the window, which we'll just copy because we are um, referring to the exact same window. And now we can proceed to the if statement. So if pred is empty, I would like to collect the user input with uh, input value, get value. And inside the round brackets, we will specify the name of our input field, which in our case is input. We'll just copy it so you guys can see it matches. Next, I'm going to add this input into our list of predictions and we'll do this with pred dot append and inside the round brackets, we will specify our input value, which we will copy and paste. And just so I know that something happened, I'm going to print scenario number one and we will print our input value along. So basically this condition is only going to be executed once because in the very end, we are appending a value to our prediction list, which is no longer empty. 
And that's where we move on to our else clause. So we will type else, which will account for scenario number two, where our list of predictions is not empty. At least for now, I'm just going to copy the lines of code from above and I will adjust scenario one to scenario two and fix the indentation issues with shift tab. And one last thing before we rerun it, let's just add some space um, to separate our input value from the text. Okay, and let's rerun it. You can tell I already rerun mine off camera. Cool, so uh, let's double check that everything works. We'll just type a random message here. We'll uh, click check. And we can see that scenario one was executed. Okay, let's switch the text to something else. Let's hit check again. And scenario two is being executed. And if we keep pressing check, only scenario number two is happening. So we got everything right. And yeah, I'm totally ignoring the exception in my terminal. It is what it is. Cool, we are finally ready to connect our functions.py to our app.py. For this, I'm going to open our functions file. And we will first copy all the dependencies because um, our app will not run without them. So we'll just copy these lines of code, all the imports, and we will paste them right underneath the DeerPy GUI imports. And right below, we can go ahead and import our functions. So I'm just gonna type functions dot py imports and we will do this with from functions no need to specify py here import let's start with categorize words pre process and lastly predict and if you guys want to learn more about these functions please check out my simple sms spam filter tutorial where I explain everything step by step. And now let's use these functions inside our callback. So first, I'm gonna tackle scenario number one, and right below our condition, we will begin with some spacing. So we'll type add spacing as usual, um, count equals 12. We will also add a separator once again. It just looks much nicer with a separator. And we will add some more spacing under the separator. And now we can go ahead and pre-process the input we just collected from the user. So we will leave the next line of code as is. We don't need to modify anything in here. But in the next line, we will type pre-process, which is our newly imported function. And we will pass the input value into it. And we will actually reassign it back to our input value just so we don't create any new variables that we're not planning to use. And once our input is pre-processed, we can go ahead and pass it through our predict function. We'll type predict input value. And in our case, our predict function returns two values. One value is a string which says it's spam or it's not spam. And the second value is a color, which can be either green or red or white. Okay, it all depends on the uh, prediction. So what we'll do is we'll assign predict to two different values. Uh, the first would be pred text. The second value would be text color. And because we would like to display our prediction and not the input value, let's replace it inside our append statement. And we will type pred text, which is uh, the string we are collecting from uh, our predict function. And lastly, we will need to replace this print statement with an actual widget. So let's just delete it. And instead of our print statement, we'll type add text. And we will use our list of predictions to specify the content of this text. We will type pred in the index of minus one. This will always stand for the most recent prediction. And we will move on with the color of our text. So let's type color equals um, text underscore color, which was also collected from our predict function. Let's test it. Let's see if it works. So let's save this and rerun this file. Just keep in mind that this time it will take much longer to load. Cool, so let's test scenario number one. Let's type 
hi this is maria okay and we'll click on check awesome so our spam filter categorizes this message as not spam which is right and the first thing we'll need to tackle inside our else clause is hiding this uh, widget and replacing it with the most recent prediction so we can delete everything we see inside the else clause we don't need it at all and we will hide our text widget with hide item and inside the run brackets we specify the name of this item and we will copy prediction in the index of minus one because that would be our name and after we remove the initial prediction we can go ahead and copy all these lines of code starting from the input value up until the add the text widget and we will paste them right underneath we'll fix the indentation of course with shift and tab and it looks like we got everything done so let's just save the file and we will rerun it once again it's gonna take some time again and once our beautiful app is loaded it's time to test it so let me just bring it to the middle of the screen and we will type our first test uh, message we'll type wanna go swimming which is not a spam perfect it's categorizing it as not spam that's what we've expected now let's go ahead to scenario number two i'm gonna type a spam message this time let's say cra has important in formation for you call now let's click on check again and perfect you can see that our old green widget is hidden we cannot see it anymore and instead of it we see a red widget properly categorizing this uh, message as spam this time it is a bit less certain than on our first prediction but at least we got that right now let's tackle a scenario where the message is absolute gibberish so um, it cannot detect if it's spam or not so let's just randomly type a bunch of characters hit check awesome so you can see that our app also tackles gibberish good job thank you so much for watching i hope you guys enjoyed this video and i will see you next week